All right, welcome to our unit on periodicity. Okay, so your topic is energy levels and orbitals. Lesson one of three, your objectives are as follows. To learn what energy levels are and how electrons can move between them. To learn how energy levels are broken down into sublevels and orbitals. To understand electron configuration and how to determine and write the electron configuration for a particular element. Okay. Go ahead and pause this anytime you feel necessary for your quick write. Okay, when you think of the shape and parts of an atom, what comes to mind? Describe what an atom looks like. What do you know about electrons? And then how do you think light is given off from a light bulb? Okay, go ahead and pause this way and do your quick write. I'm going to move on. All right, so energy levels. In the early 1900s, a scientist by the name of Niels Bohr began studying the nature of electrons and how they orbit the nucleus. Bohr believed that electrons orbit the nucleus at certain stable distances or levels. He called these levels energy levels represented by N. Okay, an energy level is a region or space where electrons can move. Okay, he also believed that the level with the lowest energy, n is equal to 1 here, okay, is closest to the nucleus. And as levels increase in energy, they become farther. So, similar to how an elevator can move between floors of a hotel, well, these electrons can jump or move back and forth between each level. Well, when excited, energy is added, heat, electricity, electrons are capable of moving to higher energy levels. Okay, so if we excite these electrons, okay, they can move to higher energy levels. Okay, well, as these electrons move back down to their stable level or ground state, energy is given off in the form of light or radiation. So when they move back down to their stable level, okay, light is given off in the form of radiation. So, energy levels. Well, each energy level corresponds to a period on the periodic table. Notice hydrogen and helium are in the first energy level. Lithium through neon are in the second energy level. Sodium through argon are in energy level 3. Potassium through krypton are in energy level 4, and so forth. N equals equal to 5. And here we have N is equal to 6. Okay, so for your notes, what are energy levels? Question on the left-hand side, answer on the right-hand side. Okay, go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. All right, so sublevels. Just as each floor in a hotel can be subdivided into rooms, well, each energy level of an atom can be subdivided and broken down into sublevels. A sublevel is a level within an energy level where electrons can move. So sublevels have letter names. We have the S sublevel. We have the P sublevel. And we have the D sublevel. Level 1, okay, has one sublevel, the 1S. Level 2, notice, has the 2S and the 2P sublevels. And level 3 here has the 3S, the 3D, and the 3P. Okay, a couple important things to note. Level 1 here does not have a P or D sublevel. So there is no 1P or 1D. Okay? Some principal energy levels start to fill up with electrons before previous ones finish. So, for example, 4S fills before 3D. Okay? And 4S has less energy. That's why it fills up first than 3D. So it must fill first. All right, for your notes. What are sublevels? Okay, go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. All right, orbitals. It is impossible to predict and know the location of an electron. Instead, scientists began describing electrons in terms of their probable location around the nucleus. So we don't know where electrons really are, but we know where they can kind of hang out. So within each sublevel are orbitals. 
An orbital is a region of space described by a shape that shows the probable okay, location of an electron. Consider our previous hotel analogy here. Okay, so let's say each room in our hotel can hold a maximum of two people. Well, just like our hotel room, an orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. So here's the s orbital. It can only hold two electrons. Okay, so the s sublevel contains one orbital here, which can hold a maximum of two electrons. So it's one orbital and two electrons. Well, remember, each orbital contains a maximum of two electrons. So the p sublevel has three orbitals. So it contains a maximum of six electrons. So the px orbital holds two electrons. The py orbital holds two electrons. Okay. And the pz orbital holds two electrons. So a total of six electrons in the p orbital here. Okay. And the last sublevel, the d sublevel, contains five orbitals. Okay. Remember, these are areas where electrons, we believe, can be found. We don't know their location, but we believe they are in these orbitals. So, therefore, the d sublevel, though, can hold a maximum of 10 electrons. 5 times 2, okay, 10 electrons. Okay, 5 orbitals in the d sublevel. All right, so for your notes, what are orbitals? Question on the left-hand side, answer goes on the right-hand side. Please draw the table. You do not need to draw this. Okay, I'm going to move on while you write. All right, electron configuration. Why do some elements bond and react readily with other elements, while other elements prefer not to bond and react at all? How electrons are arranged is the key to understanding their behavior and how they react. The arrangement of electrons in an atom's energy levels and sublevels is its electron configuration. So if we define electron configuration, it is the arrangement of electrons in an atom's orbitals and energy levels. So when determining the electron configuration, there are a few rules to consider here. Each orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. Rule two, electrons fill orbitals that have the lowest energy level first. Okay, so for your notes, what are the rules for determining the electron configuration for an atom? Okay, go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on here. All right, so determining electron configuration. Let's write the electron configuration for the simplest element hydrogen here. Okay, so notice hydrogen here is in the first energy level and contains the s orbital. So we would write 1s. Okay. Now, if you recall, hydrogen atom contains one proton and therefore has one electron. So we write a superscript here with a one to show the number of electrons. So the electron configuration for hydrogen is 1s1. And we can write an up arrow to show that one electron. Remember, an orbital can hold two electrons. These are orbitals here. All right. So let's try now the electron configuration for helium, which is very similar. Just like hydrogen, helium is in the first energy level, okay, and contains the s, okay, sublevel or orbital. So we write 1s. And if you recall, a helium atom contains two protons and therefore has two electrons. And we can show that with our two arrows here, okay. But that's the maximum amount of electrons the s orbital can hold, is two electrons. So the electron configuration for helium is 1s2. All right, well, let's try one that's a little bit more difficult now, for lithium. Okay, notice lithium is in the second energy level, n is equal to 2, and contains the s orbital. Because lithium atom contains three protons, we must fill our 1s in 2s orbitals with three electrons. Okay. So it is important to realize that we first need to fill and write the 1s orbital with two electrons here. So remember, we always fill 
the lower energy levels first, according to our rules that you just wrote down, So, which can hold a maximum of two electrons. Now we can, be, we can begin to fill the 2s level in orbital with our third and final electron. Okay, so what do you think is going to go here? Well, okay, we've already used two electrons in the 1s orbital. Now we need to account for one more, so 2s1. Okay, so the electron configuration for lithium is 1s2 and 2s1. Okay. All right, so let's try one more that's more difficult for oxygen here. Notice oxygen here is in the second energy level, right over here, okay? And contains the S and the P orbital, okay? Because an oxygen atom contains eight protons, we need to account for eight electrons in its electron configuration. So it is important to realize that we first need to fill and write the 1s orbital with two electrons and then fill our 2s orbital with two electrons. Okay, so we've used up four here, but we need to account for a total of eight. So now we can begin to fill the, the p subshell, which can hold a total of six. Okay, so now we can begin to fill the 2p level in orbital with our last four electrons. Remember, the p orbital can hold six, like I just said, but we only need to account for another four. So there it is. Okay, the electron configuration for oxygen is 1s2, 2s2, and 2p4. All right, notice eight electrons total. Okay, because we've filled the 1s, okay, orbital and levels, and then we filled the 2s and then we're here over in the 2p okay all right so practice write the electron configuration for the following atoms or elements below here okay go ahead and pause this while you work on this when you're ready to check your work hit play all right let's see how you did so beryllium 1s2 2s2 fluorine 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. Sodium, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and 3s1. Titanium, okay, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3d2. Okay, all right. So go ahead and summarize. Okay, remember you can always write your own. Okay, so go ahead and pause this while you work on your summary, and we'll see you next time.